Well, hello everyone. My name is Maureen Dubay Savage. I am a cannabis educator. I'm also a registered dietitian who was trained in the therapeutic um, benefits of cannabis from a, our certified um, program. So uh, just a kind of a nod to the uh, medical benefit when already established medical organizations uh, like the Dietetic Association identifies this as health and wellness and part of our wheelhouse as dietitian. Uh, so that's how I got started in cannabis was identifying it as yet another tool, a health tool, an herb that can be used to, for, for wellness like, like any of the other herbs. So today we are here with E411. I am an ambassador for E411. I do um, education and outreach and we are here to educate the public on safe and effective use of cannabis. There's a lot of information out there that um, is confusing and just like any um, tool and route to health, their guidance is always your best um, way to use things effectively. Right. So my name is Maureen Dubay Savage and again, I am here on behalf of LEAF 411. LEAF 411 is a uh, nurse call line. So even though I'm a dietitian, this organization is staffed by health professionals, but the nurse call line is staffed by registered nurses and they are a national nonprofit. And their goal is to get vetted guidance to people who are curious about what cannabis is all about and how it would affect them. So this is a affordable, uh, either free or reduced cost um, at $25 for a half hour guidance call. So it's a great way to get the right information and not get it from sources that maybe have alternative um, you know, agendas that maybe brands or um, an organization or even your nephew or niece have good intentions of using cannabis, but we believe that this is used as medicine and should be guided by a health professional. Uh, today's presentation also, in addition to um, having classes in civic organizations to reach the community, which is our one of our missions as a nonprofit, is to get this information out to the community. Um, we are sponsored by a brand that we uh, have vetted in regards to the quality of the product and the way that they make things and then the product itself. Um, and that is healercbd.com. So we'll talk a little bit more about them but we are grateful for their sponsorship. So again, we are a nonprofit. We operate as a nurse call line as the main source. We also do um, education handbooks and outreach programming in addition to the call line. And we are supported by donations from either sponsorships or from the community. So we are grateful for anything and uh, everything that we're able to do to be able to bring good information out to the community. So. You know, when we're talking about cannabis, and this has been a product that, uh, an item that has been prohibited, right? For about 90 years, uh, besides um, it coming as a viable legal tool that we can now use, but we can't negate kind of where we were and how we have started uh, with cannabis in regards to uh, where do you start with today's cannabis, right? And the prohibition that we have kind of gone through um, has really hampered people's ability to, in, to look at this with um, an objective lens. And that's why guidance from vetted, trained to learn about how this plant interacts with our bodies. So a lot of questions that we get from the call, uh, call line is where do I start? I'm curious about this. I've gotten past the prohibition um, agenda that we have you know, lived with and I want to start working with this. And a lot of times the questions that we get is I don't want to get high and where do I start or how do I read labels or what products should I use? So all of these type of questions um, we believe should be vetted through somebody that is really there to get you the best um, answers to the best products, not just gearing you towards a product for a sale. So we're not selling anything except education about your choices that are out there. 
So these are the different um, kind of themes that we get on the call line and only reinforces why a nonprofit like LEAF 411 should be out there as a national service to help everyone understand how this plant is so complex and then now how new cannabis, <coughs> meaning legal cannabis, how it is different from ancient use and prohibition use that most of us are aware of to now new options and new uses. So we do guide people to trusted brands, um, but they have been vetted in regards to how they're made and um, products that they offer. So again, prohibition has been about 90 years, right? So back in the 1930s is really when our current prohibition happens, right? At the end of the 1930s. But this plan has been used since the beginning of time across all continents. <coughs> Um, and it has been used as medicine for, um, in ancient texts about what they're using it for, comes a full circle to what we're now, through our new scientific ways, being able to um, verify that through our studies and through human use, long time human use, that then goes back to ancient text that says, yes, I've used this for gut health they've used this for mood, they've used this for uh, pain, right? And so it's kind of fascinating to look into the history of cannabis because we used to use it as a tincture, um, as just another normal tool, right along other herbal uh, remedies. And it wasn't until the prohibition uh, in the 1930s uh, that really took it out of a viable option, even though the American Medical Association and pharmacists, even shamans who used it for spiritual use, um, were partition, petitioning and lobbying to say, wait, this works, I need this. This is not um, my account of this plant. It is not as harmful as you're saying. But there was very much political um, force, whether it be because of the market or others that, um, pushed it out of a viable option for both spiritual, medical, and for industrial uses um, that this plant can do. So um, other things came into play, more profitable synthetic medications that were more consistent than say a plant that's grown and maybe a little different every year, similar to tomatoes or wine vintages, right? Cannabis is the same way. Every plant has its own variables from its own region, from its own seed, that give the, the complex and multiple options when you're talking about growing cannabis. Um, but during this prohibition agenda, um, there were some other easier routes that aligned, and so it kind of just, they gave up, right? The American Medical Association gave up, um, kind of saying, and this went along with what the next were. Um, and so that's, unfortunate because it really did work with a lot of um, benefits for the entire body, mind, body, and spirit, um, but we know that just it moves along. So this prohibition definitely hampered the research and the advancements that we are seeing so fastly happening since um, uh, this plan has been allowed to be researched. And that hasn't happened here in America, but it's actually happening in other countries like Canada, in Israel um, and Uruguay, uh, that they have been studying this plant for a long time. And in the 60s, we actually were able to find the molecule in the plant that then, um, what we know of is the THC, that is the molecule, only one molecule out of very many, that provide this psycho psychoactiveness in our perceptions, right? And that is what everybody is kind of had concerns about. But it was identified in the 60s, and then later in the eight, late 80s to early 90s, um, science teams were researching, actually found things in our body that mimicked this, the molecule in the plant. Because it's all, uh, there's always this question of, why is something on our earth? Why is it in our universe, right? And research then found that this plant directly mimics molecules that are in our own body that we'll talk about, and that it is able to kind of enhance that uh, molecule in our body if it's not working 
well enough. And that's what we'll learn about here, and that's why it's so effective. So um, in our body system that they found out, figured out in the um, end of 80s to 90s, is that we have a system that we call the endo, meaning inside, cannabinoid system, uh, that connects with these molecules, they're called cannabinoids in general, directly into our body. And that was what was so fascinating. And what's also fascinating is that we were still in prohibition times, thinking that research and science will prove things and that will change laws. And that is definitely not the case, right? <laughs> Woo, if we could only be so lucky, right? Um, but it is just fascinating to realize that um, the more and more we learn about these receptors in our body and, and actually the entire system, which is not just receptors, but enzymes and other standard systems, just like your circulatory system and your respiratory, all these other systems actually is regulated by the system. And that gives you an understanding of why does this one plant who has many, many molecules in it and have many purposes in it can affect so many things in our body. Well, it's because this system is responsible for balancing out all the other systems in our body. And that's what's so fascinating. It's also the system to help us relax, rest, digest, and protect our um, other systems. And so that's why they call it the master regulator or, or the fancy word is homeostasis, right? It's the balancer. So I, I think of it as like a waiter that's running in, around the restaurant and people keep give you know, let me add to your load, okay. And then they balance this way. Let me take that load off, okay. But they're still staying upright and they're still servicing, right? And that's the way I kind of give an example of what this system does for us and it's wonderful. So the receptors that they have found in our body, and there's others, but the two main ones are what they call cannabinoid or CBD or CB receptor one and two. And there are, um, they're uh, concentrated in the body in general, um, although they're all over the body, but the CBD on B1 receptor is mainly in the neurological system. So it's in our brain. Um, Although it's in other areas of our body, uh, that's where it fires up. And then the CB2 receptor is in the bone, spleen, our outside peripheral, right? And then they're in both. And again, this is why it affects so many things. Because people are like, well, why, does, why do you claim it's good for all of these things? And how can that be possible? Because we always say, no one tool, no one way can fix everything. And that's the same for cannabis too. It's yet another tool, but I also say it's a very powerful tool because of its balancing act of all the other things in our, in our body. So they have direct the molecules from the plant, mimic molecules in our body that directly connect into these receptors that help balance all of our other systems. And that's a simplified way to explain a complex system. So this is an example of, this is the two um, internal molecules that get released naturally uh, in our body to help balance our systems. And we can enhance these two uh, endocannabinoids, meaning that they're in our body uh, making and producing our cells, but it is a similar replica to the molecule that's in the um, plant. And the same thing happens too with the second, the um, two uh, AD is the shorter way of saying that, um, in other molecules and parts of the plant in our body. And it's a realization that there, there's a reason to supplement is this plant into our body when our body is either working too much and the, the two that are in our body are working too hard, they're, they're they just can't keep up the pace of that balance. So this external or plant phytocannabinoids can help. So phytocannabinoids are that. They, they are the plant molecules versus internally or endocannabinoids, which are the ones that we make in our body naturally. So this plant produces these cannabinoids, but they also produce other things that are called trichomes, which have these flavonoids and terpenes, which are basically the essential oils 
of the plant. And, and we have these in all plants. So it's not any different, like there's flavonoids in lemon, there's flavonoids in all of your, um, you know, other plants and, and herbs, right? So that's nothing uh, new to the plant world, right? But in the cannabis sativa plant, they have these cannabinoid molecules that are not, they actually show up in a couple plants, but um, this is where it's mainly concentrated. Like this is the job of this plant is to connect in our body when we need to supplement because our internal cannabinoids are being stressed, right? And why are they being stressed? All the reasons we're stressed, right? Poor diet, poor sleep, um, poor mental health, not enough movement, all the standard pillars of health that help you be healthy, help keep those internal cannabinoids working their best to make your body work the best. So if we beat that up, which we do, right? We may need external support which the cannabis plant can do. And so a reminder that all plants are great, right? Eat all of your plants because they have all of these wonderful um, flavonoids and phytochemicals um, that are good for you, but this plant has it really concentrated. So these are the phytocannabinoids. So we are familiar out in public um, of THC because that's the one that's gotten all of the attention because there is a change in your perception that can happen with a certain amount of dose that is more than what your body um, is used to, right? Uh, dose is not, not dependent on your perception change. It's really about how you interact with the plant. But the other one is CBD. We've heard a lot about that too, because it's such a powerful anti-inflammatory. They are the two most abundant molecules in this plant, and have gotten the first and most attention. But what they're finding is there's other molecules in this plant that have their own specific uh, role in the endocannabinoid system that we are learning as fast as we are researching it, which that fortunately a lot is happening now, because people want to understand that, that we're finding that CBN could be something that's a relaxer, right? And so there's indications, right? We, we don't know fully that may be a relaxer for certain conditions. Um, they're finding that blood sugar control with THCB um, is good and so then all of a sudden people are like, whoa, could that help with diabetes and blood sugar? We don't know, but these early signs are showing us that these molecules have roles in our body. And we're finding that out. And it's just a, a phenomenal realization of how powerful this plant can be once we understand it more. And the only way that we're gonna understand it more is to research it and understand and educate so that we can use it effectively and safely. Uh, they have identified at least 160, maybe even 180 or more. I think every time you look at that number, it keeps going up. Um, but it just tells you how diverse this plant is. Really all plants are. Um, but that it directly fits in the receptor in our, receptors in our body. That I'm not sure what other you know, plants, how plants, um, do it so specifically into a major body system. So the entourage effect is when we use a plant and we use the whole plant. And just like food, as a dietitian, I you know, um, speak about this, whole plant is always you're gonna be your best way, right? Raw, whole, because you're getting exactly what nature intended. And so then with any level of processing, we are going to start losing nutrients um, or cannabinoids, either from air, standard degradation, right? Air, light, heat, movement, all these different things happen in any of our food systems. Uh, but it's always encouraged that when we use this as medicine, that the best way, the gold star, right, uh, is to use it from fully extracted so that you can get all the variety that's in there versus what's happening is that um, because of science, we can take this plant and now we can start to process it like everything, 
just like we can take an orange and process it down to vitamin C, we can take this plant and process it down to whichever stage we want to stop at, all the way to pharmaceutical, meaning an isolate single molecule of any of these that work well. Um, so you have this gamut. But if we're out educating on gold standard, the best way is always gonna be whole plant. So when we talk about medicine in a um, ancient way, when you saw those bottles, they were either like an alcohol-based or an oil-based tincture, or um, yeah, that's the main way, they, they, um, main product that they call it. Um, these are two ways to extract directly from the plant, easily and safely, um, that then give you just a full plant extract versus these bigger machines that can get smaller and smaller molecules. And so you can get all those, but we encourage to get the whole plant. But you can also benefit from any of these stages as long as you're treating um, products to the right condition. Um, and that's guidance, what guidance helps you with. So the biggest question that we get and confusion is the difference we hear this verbiage of hemp versus cannabis or hemp versus marijuana. And the reality is, is that the plant itself, just like tomatoes or grapes, is cannabis. Just like they're grapes, they are tomatoes, right? But in those plants, then we have the romas, then we have cherry, right? We have all these different varietals. And those varietals produce different yields, they produce different flowers, they produce different fruit, right? Just like grapes, there's white grapes, there's dark grapes. That's the same with cannabis. When we're classifying cannabis to legalization and then also usage, how am I gonna use this plant? It's about how much THC is in it, right? So hemp means that this is a um, legal compliant, which this number doesn't mean anything other than they determine a number that says that this is gonna be a legal product and this one has to be a regulated product. And it's only rooted in the amount of THC that the plant expresses. So breeders then can then grow either more THC in that plant or more CBD in the plant or really whatever they want. But in regards to legality, that's the difference is legally we can have hemp, which is CBD, meaning usually it means that it is all CBD and not low THC to the required 0.3%. Um, that is the one that you can get legally right now, over the counter, in a shop, right, online. Um, because it's compliant with the, the 2018 Farm Bill that says you're allowed to sell this cannabis as long as it has 0.3% THC or less. And what that means is if there's very little THC in it, it means that there's a whole lot of CBD in it. So some people call hemp CBD because that's the dominant molecule that that plant chose, or not chose, we chose to genetically modify it to express itself with more CBD. And they can do that in all different ratios with the plant. Um, to determine do I want it to be half CBD, half THC, which we don't see much of. It's usually all THC or all CBD, unfortunately, um, in our current commercial market. Because you can purchase seeds and grow other ratios, but in regards to what you have available out there, most is either majority THC or they choose to go on to the unregulated side. So it's really about a business choice to am I gonna be on a regulated side and in the marijuana side, or do I do CBD and hemp? And they have their own you know, general um, rules and practices, but it's not as much as the regulated THC market, which is our dispensaries that you see in, you know, throughout our state. The nice part about purchasing cannabis from a regulated marijuana is what most people call, meaning high THC products, over this 0.3% is that in dispensaries, you those products are tested. The unfortunate part is that you have to vet CBD, and that's what we're here to help you, you know, help you do, because hemp CBD is not required 
to do a whole lot of other stuff. And so then you have to have either vetting or faith-based that they're making and growing this plant, just like you want your tomatoes grown well or any anything else, and that they're processing this in good manufacturing practices. But there's not standards out there, and so that's why vetting products is really important. The other interesting part um, is that um, this plant remediates. So um, if you're familiar with that word, it means that it kind of neutralizes, takes things to a neutral. It remediates soil by pulling things out of the soil and then they cut that crop down and then they properly um, dismiss it. Um, they have done that for oil cleanups, chemical cleanups. Um, uh, there's you know, statements that they used in Chernobyl to clean up um, areas, the dirt, to regenerate. It regenerates soil because it gets the gunk out. But what does that tell you? You better be careful then of what's going into the soil, the product that you're choosing to consume, especially if you're going to inhale, right? Because you're going right into your lungs. So again, another reason why guidance and vetting products and knowing what to look for in a product is helpful to just be safe on, it's funny because the, non, or the uh, low THC, which should be of low risk, potentially has higher risk only because of the manufacturing practices, not because of, of how much THC are in it or not. So it's, it's an interesting kind of dichotomy that we're, we're dealing with in this industry is that we have this regulated market that goes through a lot of hoops and testing that you want to happen in anything that you're consuming, right? So we want uh, effective, proper, correct regulations and, and um, oversight. But when there's not, then, and then we are concerned and you have to vet products. But what I found is we've been dealing with this because it's an herb. You have to vet all of your, most of your herbs and vitamins because they're not regulating it to the level that other drugs and products are. And so, um, you know, it is buyer beware and buyer vet um, when you're working in any of these health and, um, beauty products, I mean, what you put on your skin and what you put in your product um, really matters. And, you know, there's a lot of creams and sunscreens and things that are on the shelves, but um, they haven't really been tested and vetted. Um, we need to do that. So again, when we are in the regulated space, it's usually because the product is over, the flower, uh, the plant, is over this 0.3%. And this is uh, not really a, a scientific amount, it came up, it was just kind of like a, an opinion piece of like, okay, and it just kind of stuck. And even the person who um, uh, kind of put that in the opinion piece um, doesn't really have a you know, background of why, because we know the way that this plant interacts with our body, the amount of THC that you consume is very personalized. So intoxication is not dose dependent. It can be once you understand how it affects you, but it is not person to person. It's a very personalized. Why? Because your system is, is in balance, different than my system, right? And genetics play a part. Our diet plays a part. Our other health tools, right, play a part. Healthier people tend to use less cannabis because they're, they're um, body is internally balanced. Now that doesn't mean that uh, cannabis users are unhealthy, but I do believe that we're all treating something when we're using any kind of, um, you know, tool like this herb, you know, and so, um, because it works, because we use it and it makes us feel better. It balances things out. And so um, I believe that everyone who uses cannabis whether they're aware of it or not, is using it for a medical reason inside themselves. They may or may not use it, even if it's just for the giggles. That's a good medical reason. Let's laugh, right? We know the value of laughter, right? Which THC does for some people, and, and um, that's a positive side of it, right? So the value also of purchasing products in a regulated space is that it has been tested. Um, these companies are monitored. 
their systems are checked, right? Um, could it always be better? Of course, this is a new um, industry, about 10 years old now. And so that's improving every year. Every law, legal sessions, uh, we're improving that process. And it should always be rooted in patient safety and patient's medical needs. Um, and so good manufacturing practices, standards and regulation always bring out a better product than an open market where people are making up their own um, systems. And so that is another reason. What I would love to see is more CBD in this regulated side and that the CBD set, um, side says, yeah, I wanna go through that system to show my product meets this criteria, test my product. And that I encourage CBD brands to do that so that I can validate it quicker that if you go through the regulated um, you know, dispensary system, your product will be tested. And therefore, then the public knows, right? So right now, CBD is not under the regulated, it can be, so now we have to vet it, right? We as consumers. Um, so I encourage CBD brands to take a look at um, putting their products through the dispensary uh, regulation. So this is what, just like food labels, this is a certificate of analysis. And it tells you exactly what's in what you're consuming, right? And so we can get this for the plant, meaning if you just purchase the flower for your use, to any product that's in the regulated um, space. Uh, there are plenty of companies out there in the CBD space that are testing their products and putting that out there for consumers. And Healer, our sponsor, is one of them. And they go above and beyond. So a lot of the stuff that's on here is not required, to be honest with you. And each state has different requirements, so understand that too. But the basic is that they do want to know how much CBD of the two major molecules are in there, how much CBD, how much THC, um, and then also testing things like mold, pesticides, any of like mercury and lead that may be in the soil where they grow the product. They may not have properly taken that out. Um, and again, that's why purchasing products that have the label uh, that you can either scan off the um, side of the product. So often they have like a QR code so that you can get further details. You can also look on their website, uh, but they're required in the dispensaries, the regulated space, they're required to have this. Most good company, CBD, com CBD companies will have it. And that, to me, is your first vetting that if that company doesn't have a test, don't, don't consume it because um, you just don't know where it's coming from. So that's just a good example of what a certificate analysis is and you should always have it for any product. It's your food label, right? What's in here? <laughs> right? So there are many ways to consume cannabis. Back in the day, ancient use, right, was that they either uh, inhaled this, right, that was a sacred ceremonial use, right, um, of, of inhalation because it's a quick onset. Uh, and then they created these tinctures, right, either alcohol extracted or oil extracted. They created these tinctures in drops. Um, I'm sure they made topicals and they probably put it in their food, but historically it was um, inhaled and then in kind of like most, like most medicines were. And they were, um, the other thing I like to say about ancient cannabis use is that it was rarely used alone. It was always part of a blend, right? Of a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. It's not, it was never used as forward, meaning as um, the only like single ingredient that we're presenting it now. And what I do find is that we're seeing that it works better in tandem with other herbs, right? Synergistically with other herbs, not just within itself of pulling all the molecules out of the plant and making sure you get all the molecules, not just one, kind of like eat an orange instead of taking your vitamin C even though vitamin C supplementation and you know single molecule does work. And we will see that once we progress into vetted research of these molecules, you're gonna have all the choices. You'll choose to, to stay whole plant based, right? Or hopefully that we can get it into the system that we're currently using here in America 
which wants consistent, uh, repeatable um, experiences. And since the plan is so dynamic, you can only do that by dwindling it down to the molecules that we know we need to get activated in your system. So there will, we'll get to where it's all gonna be available and then there's right reasons for all the different, um, so not saying that a single molecule is bad, it, it can be used very effectively and it does. That's what our um, prescriptions are. That's what our, our current medications are. And it's because it's predictable, repeatable, right? It fits into something that we can be consistent about. Because when you work with the plan, it is a trial and track especially when you're working with whole plant um, because our body's different, it shows up different every day, and this plant shows up every growth cycle a little different, right? Every year, just like a vintage of a wine, you're still gonna have a Cabernet, but that's 1919's, you know, or, excuse me, <laughs> um, excuse me. You know, like each year, it's gonna be different because the variables were different. But when we're talking about medicine, and full system medicine, we may need that consistency. But different routes of administration have different effects. And when we work with clients to guide them, first we work with you to say, what is it that you're looking to work with? And there are preferences. Lots of people don't want to inhale and there's safer ways to inhale, but there's good reason to inhale because it's a quick onset, right? Tinctures and drops have a, the next quicker, quicker set of onset. Um, but some people don't like the taste, right? Edibles can be unpredictable in our diet, in our gut, right? And, and it's a longer on, onset and it has a little bit different feeling. Great for chronic pain and long-term um, needs, right? Or just keeping you consistently level without ever going up and down that inhalation you have to kind of chase the pain or chase the symptom that you're managing, right? And obviously topical. Um, we do have receptors on, in our skin. And so topicals work up to a point, and then you might have to layer. And then um, transdermal is just an, you know, an updated way to deliver any medicine. So we're familiar with that. But what's not on here is actually suppository. So either um, forward or back have medicinal value for certain conditions. So we go over all of this with you because it matters. It affects you differently and different routes um, are better or are known to help for different conditions. Meaning long-term chronic pain, people really find that when they ingest it, it's a, it's a different and a different better feel for maybe long-term chronic pain, right? But acute pain inhalation. So that's the little algorithm that we help you through. And then we turn these questions of, first we work with you to determine what you're looking for to manage. Then we talk about the different routes that you can um, consider based on that. And then we turn to the products and help you find a product that you would then trial and track and, and figure out how to, to use it and how it's working for you. So, not, you know, not just one way, right? There's many ways that this plant can be applied and has its role in each of the conditions that it helps. The other thing that we work with is, this is similar to the 0.3% has such low THC in it, and it's all CBD, right? When we talk about ratios, that's what that is. So it just means how much of one and how much to the other. And what we're finding is that certain conditions do well with different ratios because of CBD acts on the body differently than THC. And all those other molecules actually work on the body differently in our system. So as we're finding out more, right, we're figuring out that maybe an equal, and that's where uh, a lot of people find their best relief, um, but each condition and each person determines that, oh, this is the ratio. I need a lot of CBD and just a little THC, or I need half and half, or I need a lot of THC at night, but not during the day, 
right? At nine, I want to be able to sleep and the pain kind of creeps up from the day's activities and that's where I need more THC because I don't want that during the day. But I do need some to manage my pain. And so these are the questions, again, that we work with you based on your condition to determine these questions. A lot of questions here about this plant and a lot of ways to engage with it. It's not just straightforward that all cannabis is the same. I was recently at a um, research conference and I found it fascinating that they kept saying cannabis, that cannabis is this or, or results in that without clarifying how much of what the molecule, because that's really important. Because all cannabis is not the same, the way that you take it and its formulation. So ratios or formulations. And when I talked about like the tinctures that it had, um, ancient tinctures that had other herbs in it to, to manage the condition, that's the same here. The strength of the um, formulation and how much or what also goes into the medicine and the cure, or not the curing, um, the management of the symptom, right? But, but in ancient times, they did cure things. You know, they managed that symptom that it went away and they called that curing, right? I cured my, well, you took your pain away, right? <laughs> um, and a lot of that could have been from cannabis and other wonderful, you know, whole world of herbs gets these um, benefits uh, of symptom management because the whole plant world is beneficial. So when I talk about the therapeutic uses, we definitely talk about symptom management, right? We have not been able to directly say cannabis has cured any disease, right? We shouldn't be saying that at all. But what this plant can do is to support your body to manage a dis-ease in your symptoms or in your body that are creating these symptoms. And we can, cannabis can help those symptoms, right? And again, when you saw that, wow, we have receptors all over our body. It's in our brain, it's in our gut, it's on our skin. It's everywhere, either CB1 or CB2 receptors. And there's other receptors, so we won't even go into that, but as they're still learning our body and learning this plant, they're finding we have even more variables in this endocannabinoid system. But that's why there's so many therapeutic uses for it. And so many things that we can support with the right dose, meaning amount, with the right ratio, with the right route of consumption, and, and, um, and um, sometimes you layer, or you know, um, couple. Sometimes some conditions need multiple uh, routes because your day needs are different than your night needs. And we often see that people have multiple regimens, especially when they're treating variety of conditions, right? I take, I take the topical for my hand arthritis, but I inhale for, for my um, pain, and then I take a gummy at night for my sleep, right? That would be an example of that, right? So each condition can have its own um, regimen, right? So, we can get healing without high. So everyone is always concerned, and rightfully so, that if you don't wanna get high but are curious about using cannabis, um, that is, a, again, where a guide helps you to not have that high. There's ways to bring down the amount of THC to an amount that you, is, is sub-perceptive, right? That you're not feeling really anything but it's actually triggering your neurological that you want it. Um, and so with these different molecules, these are kind of the, when I was saying that each molecule has its different role, these are kind of where we're seeing um, them play out. That THC definitely helps with sleep. We all know that. You get that sleepiness sometimes with certain types of plants. Well, we're figuring out how to understand that and to guide you to use it for sleep. Um, but some people get insomnia from, uh, you know, uh, CBD. They get excited, you know, like, um, excited from CBD. It activates them. So again, we respond to this plant in our system a little bit different, but we have been seeing where we're realizing, oh, this one helps with that, that one helps with that. And we're getting more and more understanding that. 
And so when you work with a guide, especially someone that's gonna work with you long term, um, you can really treat some conditions by trialing and tracking different formulations based on what we currently know. Because like science, it's always evolving. And so I could come back and talk about this in six months and maybe change these slides because we found out something new. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's all science, really, um, is you want it to be ever-changing. You want to rediscover um, what we're using and consuming in our life. So we do need to be concerned um, with all of this adjustments in our body for, for good, it will have some um, uh, effects. So they, we, when we're treating multiple conditions, um, we want to kind of have multiple formulations and we're starting to see that in products. We never used to see that. It used to be just THC and CBD, right? And we never heard, you know, we didn't see anything. Now we're seeing multiple, multiple um, of the molecules in one formulation, which is great to treat certain things. So as an example, um, with dementia and associated um, the challenges that happen with dementia, which happens with irritability and aggression or flighting, uh, trying to leave, those type of things. When you start um, treating these kind of associated behaviors, um, because it's a master balancer, it starts helping other things and starts reducing other um, parts in your quality of life, right? Either taking away pain or gaining independence, um, taking away uh, maybe no appetite to engaging back in socialization with food and sitting with family, right? not being so aggressive and now being able to sit and have a quality conversation um, to, the, to their best abilities, right? So combinations can be used to improve the quality of life that we see happen. You're treating maybe aggression and then you realize, oh, wow, we were treating aggression and they're actually sleeping better, right? And it's because when you work with a combination, you can start treating a couple different things. Um, and, and that's a wonderful thing about the plan, it's a, it does help a lot of um, multiple conditions. Once you start settling down inflammation, right? And so cannabis isn't the only plant that helps with inflammation, right? Um, but it's a powerful one. CBD particularly is that anti-inflammatory benefit. Um, but there are interactions. So when we say interaction, it means that your medication that you may take in, is probably using some of the same systems in our body that cannabis also uses. And so therefore it may make your medication that you're currently taking work better or less or, or not as good. And that's why it's so important that if you are going to start a, uh, a trial to manage something, to please let your phys prescribing physician know or clinician, right? that you're gonna start this so that they can start monitoring, particularly things like blood pressure or um, blood thinning or anything that uses a certain enzyme pathway. Um, your physician um, should be trained, right? Should get education on this, um, on this plant and this new, uh, not new, but re-entered medi you know, medical tool um, there is a lot of information and resources on our website to share with your clinician. If you're saying, I want to try this, we are here to support you because you can call and not have to play. We are free or reduced. So if you can afford to pay for the call, we appreciate that. We're a nonprofit and we appreciate that. But our first goal is to get that um, safe therapeutic information out so that you can trial this and, and um, you know, any of the safety concerns that you may have. So, you know, it, medication interactions, it depends. It depends on the current dose that you're taking. It depends on how much of cannabis you're taking. Um, and so always, when you increase a dose of anything, so if you're really using a lot of cannabis, absolutely, you may throw off another medication. But with the doses that we are suggesting and encouraging, 
rarely get to high doses unless we're really treating a, a, a disease or a condition. So you're really only at risk when you're really at high doses of either CBD or THC. But it's worth saying that there's more information about this and that it depends. It depends on what you're doing and how much you're taking, what medications you're taking and how much you're using of this plant. So there's always caution, always um, suggest um, encouragement to let your clinicians know um, because they should always know about what you're consuming, right? Over the counter drugs, uh, what food you're eating, right? How much caffeine you're consuming, how much nicotine, how much other, right? So all that should be disclosed to get a big, the full picture of what um, you know your your lifestyle looks like. But what I also um, want to identify that adverse effects are not drug interactions. So we do know that, and this is particularly with THC, but CBD can um, kind of create some feelings, right? Effects um, of anxiety, right? Some people uh, get that with THC and it doesn't have to be a high dose. It's just a high dose for them, right? So that depends on your tolerance, your usage, what your body is used to, right? And then the amount, right? How much did you take? Uh, you could feel sedated, but that's exactly what you were supposed to be getting from that medication, right? So that may not be an adverse effect, but maybe it might not have been known or wanted. And so then therefore, someone who is not guided could think that that's negative or that it's a drug interaction. And that's exactly what we were looking for as the benefit of using this plant. So adverse effects are what they call it but I don't um, like to really use that in a way of just, these are the things that can happen and be aware, right? So your blood pressure may decrease. That often happens with inhalation and quick, quick hits of THC um, of somebody who's new to it, right? We don't see that as much with established long-term chronic users, it, it, right? A lot of this happens because they're new to it and they take a, uh, an amount that is more than they should have for that event, right, for that. Um, disorientation uh, could be for one person, right, feeling like they're disoriented, but others um, take that as introspective, right? I feel disoriented. Well, oh, I'm, I like this, right? So it is personalized. Um, we do know, though, based on the physiology of what this plant does in our body, we do get dry mouth and eyes, and there's ways to combat that, right? Um, and, you know, it, their ocular pressure has, um, you know, for glaucoma and ocular pressure has um, had great benefits for people for, um, you know, eye, um, for particularly for that condition. Um, and so that may be a benefit for them, right? Um, so just realize that these things can happen, but it's usually um, an early user that took too much. And it's just a sign that your dose was too high. And what we encourage people is to not be afraid of it, like just stay with it, but then you know, we're gonna decrease your um, dose. And, and when you're working with a guide though, we never take you to a higher dose. And sometimes it can happen, we think that, because some people can really be disoriented on one milligram. And it's hard to find one milligram dosing, and it's, but it's out there. And somebody can be um, disoriented and feel the effects of that THC on one milligram. And that's why a lot of times when we're working with um, new users, uh, people, you know, aging, that um, their response to medications um, is quicker and there's other medications that are happening in the system. So we go super slow. And that's always should be the case with any of your medications. Um, so here's others uh, that we want to just highlight. And like I said, the blood pressure is one, and the fluctuations, often we see that with new users and too much. Um, alcohol and cannabis, it kind of adds to it. It increases the level of both, and it's encouraged, of course, not to uh, drink or uh, use cannabis and drive, right? Um, and especially when they go together to be aware, it, it increases. Uh, blood thinners, this is the metabolism system that I was talking about. 
blood thinners can slow it, and so there could be risks for bruising and bleeding. Very much it. Um, not that you can't use cannabis, it is again, one that you just go slower and use caution. But it doesn't take you out of using the be uh, beneficial um, properties of this plant. And then the one that we uh, really hope that can be a big impact on our country is to help our opioid um, epidemic because we do know that there's synergy to it and that when we use cannabis with opioids, it helps wean down the opioid dose. And some people have even been able to come off their opioids and still manage their pain. Um, but the value of that is cannabis does not suppress our respiratory system. Therefore, we are never at risk of dying by taking too much cannabis. So the benefit of working with opioid users and safely teaching them how to use cannabis effectively and increase your opioid dose can really help because less opioids will re reduce your risk of any kind of respiratory distress that could happen um, with opioid use. And so um, a beautiful thing when it's done um, safely and guided with, um, you know, not, not on your own. So there are some interactions specifically with CBD. That's that grapefruit medication, or, or any medications that you're advised that to um, be mindful of, uh, like that grapefruit does, um, interacts, that's the, that's the blood thinning system. It's the cytochrome P50, <laughs> P450. Um, so it's just, that's the one that you have to just really make sure you let your physicians, um, prescribing physicians know about because you may have to adjust. But usually with slow use, you don't have to. Um, our uh, conclusions on safe use is that cannabis is not risk-free. So when we're talking about either CBD, THC or any other molecules, when we say that this benefits us and does um, affect us inside our body, um, that has to be used with caution, right? To be aware, I am affecting my system. So let me make sure that I'm well aware of what I'm doing with that. So it's not risk-free, uh, but it is a lot less risk than a lot of other current, um, you know, products that people are using to manage these symptoms, a lot less, um, you know, risk. Uh, it, it, uh, when you go low and slow and start to understand how your body is really a, a beautiful uh, relationship. Also that it's not a magic bullet. Um, or I always like to say it's part of the pillars of health. And like I said earlier, how our internal endocannabinoid system that has these molecules that our plant has directly can be enhanced by all the other pillars of health. And so you don't need to use cannabis to become healthy. You can use all the other tools too. Start eating better, get better sleep, reduce your stress, have better mindfulness, better relationships, right? All those great pillars of health will also get you there, right? And this is just one tool. But it's a powerful tool and can, I think, get you rebalanced so that you can start working on the whole right spectrum of health um, instead of being stuck in stress and stuck in um, fight or flight, stuck in a mood, or, right? All of these things can be untangled when you come to a better balance in your body, then you can address some of these other things. Um, it can be used safely. Uh, there is, so many formulations, so, so many great products out there that when you're guided to the right product for you, it's quite enjoyable and very safe. Um, and it can be used unsafely. So when, like anything, right, when we start talking about overuse or misuse, or um, I always say caution in concentration. So whenever you have anything in concentration, sugar, caffeine, right, nicotine, Anything in concentration should always be used in caution. And so um, it can, cannabis can be used unsafely. It is not um, just inherently safe. You have to use it safe, right? You can kill yourself drinking too much water, right? It is how we engage with anything in our world um, that determines safety or unsafety, right? Um, 
And it, the other thing is that um, a lot of products and a lot of our flour in the recreational, regulatory, recreational side um, have majority of THC in their flour. And I think a lot of people don't understand that CBD has kind of been breeded out in the genetics of it so that you can increase the THC. But we are seeing now by demand and education that THC alone is not using this plant to its fullest benefit. And that products out there are um, kind of very THC forward and that we need to be using the whole plant and the second largest molecule by design in this plant is the CBD. And so it does help buffer THC's effects when it's combined. It actually makes you go wider. You feel more things because it's working on a different receptor and a different system in our body. So it actually doesn't even connect directly. It kind of indirectly supports the other systems to connect and, you know, kind of increase this, decrease that, right? Um, but it does help to just round out the feeling. And once people understand that, they actually like the, the um, feeling and the benefits of when they use THC and CBD together. Um, and like I said, it's not just the one doll, end all, be all. It's a part of a full treatment plan, not just take it for, um, you know, one, one thing. It's, it's part of your whole pillar of health. Um, eat, you know, eat your veggies, eat all your plants, not just cannabis, right? And can, um, education um, about this, because if you're just getting education through either the stories then um, uh, on the, in the news, then you're only getting the side of looking for the harms. And there's not many of us out here being able to get the messaging out and there are there's medical cannabis societies society of cannabis clinicians there's nurses i mean this is a nurse um forward uh, we're bringing in other clinicians too but um the uh, nursing association acknowledge cannabis therapeutics as a specialty the dietetic association acknowledges it as a specialty so i got credit for learning about how this plant interacts with our body because that's our wheelhouse, right? So we are coming along. We do need to see more of our uh, medical professionals being trained in this beautiful endocannabinoid system. Um, that would be wonderful progress. Um, so again, this is how to connect with us and there's lots of material, so I won't uh, refer to this, but it's free to reduce. And um, we are there to answer all your questions, share this with anybody and everyone um, because that's what we're here to do, is to get this information out to you. Uh, this is one of our vetted and supported uh, brands. And we are, all, we are highlighting his products, not only because he's a sponsor, right, and which we appreciate that. We are a nonprofit. He is saying, or, or this brand, right, but this is a um, physician who has a practice in Maine and has been formulating a product that he believes um, can treat uh, our, you know, our community, and it's primarily CBD. So it's it's he's acknowledging that CBD is truly uh, needs to be in all formulations, and it's really the, the most forward formulation. And he is very um, promoing high CBD and low to very low doses of THC as kind of one of the um, kind of sweet spots that this plant is expressing itself, particularly for healing and anti-inflammatory. So that's the product and um, they have a full line, but what product they are um, really trying to get out to the community is a product working with seniors for the example of dementia and Alzheimer's. So um, he created a formulation, again, that has a tinge of THC in it, right? But majority is CBD, and in the way that um, it's presented, it helps people, either the caregiver or the person themselves, if they're still caring at a level for themselves, to have it very organized in these packs that are facility compliant. So if you did have a loved one, 
in a facility that you have a right to give them an herbal supplement because that's this category. This is not in the category of state regulations that aren't allowed in uh, facilities. Uh, this is a legal compliant product because it's the tinge of THC and really his belief is the, the benefits of all these other molecules in the plant and he created this formulation to help specifically with the dementia related behaviors of aggression, wandering, worry, aches, pains that we all really have. Um, but he set it up in a way that you could, um, it's an easy way for you to administer to a loved one at home or yourself or in a facility by putting it in a pack like this that makes more sense to some people, right? This uh, product also comes in just standard C like gummies. It's just that it, they moved it into a, a, a delivery method that makes sense for um, people first learning this and, and understanding how to use this just like your other medicine um, and it's facility compliant uh, so that people can take it into their loved ones and be allowed to um, support them. And we're, they're definitely seeing wonderful, wonderful um, kind of feedback of those who are trying this, especially in facilities, because what they're finding is not only the person is having less, right? They're not taking these away, but maybe they'll take three away, right? And when I've been a caretaker for two different clients uh, with the same condition, and for the caregivers, whether it be that's your spouse, or that this is your family member, or somebody that you are working for that you become their family, if you can take a couple things away, that's a workload off you, but also you know that they're stressing less, right? That their quality of life is increased. And that's the, that's the beauty of um, what we're trying to do is to get this information out to say, give it a try and we can guide you. So this product and all of their products um, are backed by our nurse line. So if you purchase one of their products, you get free calls because this organization, this brand knows that this only works if you understand how to use it, right? This will work the best when we support you through every stage and that should be part of this treatment. So it's like, it's this is your treatment plan. Here's how we set it up, and we are going to support you down the line until you understand it, and you're off and running and having an increased quality of life. So we really love this product as um, clinicians, right? As working in, I have worked in hospitals, senior homes. Like I said, I had two private clients. I was a one-to-one -one caregiver with dementia. Uh, I put my the first gentleman I worked with. He started these specific gummies, and I really do believe that I maintained some of his cognizant longer. I was with him for three years, and I put him on the dose that were family agreed to, and I was new learning this, but totally understood and knew this product was quality, and I, I do believe, now it's hard to determine, did you defer any you know, progression, right? That's a difficult, um, but, he really maintained a high quality of life for up until his body shut down. But I do think that he, um, his quality of life was maintained for a little longer. Um, so I hope that is a great explanation for you to get started to learn about the benefits of this plant and to understand um, to where to get resources and support if you choose to trial. And I have a, a, a variety of information here, but if you would like to trial any products, we do have some samples that we would, um, you know, answer your questions and I can give you, a, you know, some short guidance here. Um, we do have a topical that we sent around that we'd love to support people to just give a try because a topical is not a, if you're interested, yeah. Yeah. a topical is um, very low risk because you don't, um, you absorb for sure.